Hello everyone and welcome back to Affinity for Commander. My name is Alex and today for our deck tech it is party time! I'm going to be honest, I don't know what else you're expecting from me. What this means in practice is that we're going to be looking at the new party based commander from Baldur's Gate, Nalia de Arnas. This particular deck tech was voted for by our amazing patrons who make all of the Affinity for Commander content possible, and also apparently like to watch me suffer by choosing this deck tech, so thanks guys. If you too like to take part in my own personal suffering, then be sure to head over to patreon.com and help support the channel directly, and you'll get access to exclusive EDH related rewards. If you yourself would like to purchase any of the cards I'm going to be talking about here, or even the entire deck, then be sure to head over to any of our lovely affiliate links in the description box below for your personal cardboard provider. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it really helps the channel out a lot. Or if you want to stand out from the party, then be sure to head over to altersleeves.com and peruse their extensive library of perfect fit alter sleeves. Again, links in the description. Now let's see if we can't catch Nalia's eye from across the dance floor. Nalia de Arnis is a 3-3 legendary creature, human rogue, for 1 generic, 1 white, and 1 black mana. She reads, You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may cast Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, and Wizard spells from the top of your library. And, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain death touch until the end of turn. Now, as a quick recap of the party mechanic, what you need to have a full party is each of the four aforementioned creature types, Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, and Wizard. If you have, for example, two creatures of this type, or a Changeling, then you essentially need to make sure that you have one of each, and the Changeling can be whatever you want, it's essentially a free slot. Have one of each out, and you have a full party, and you'll trigger Nalia's ability. And Nalia herself already fills the rogue slot, which is awfully convenient. Beyond her own creature type, I personally think she is the far better partner commander than the alternative one that comes in the deck in Baracus. Now, yes, you do get him as filling whatever you want, and when you partner him with up the background that comes with the deck, you then get the black-white colour identity. But he can only at most draw one card a turn, Whereas Nalia, provided we have the mana, can literally churn through the top card of our library casting creature after creature. You're not limited to just one cleric, rogue, wizard, or warrior a turn. You can go wizard, wizard, wizard if you want to. Speaking of the creatures that we're going to have Nalia be leading, let's actually take a look at the deck. And what cards in the precon that we're going to be keeping in. Because honestly, it's actually a pretty good precon, so well done on that, wizards. Starting off at the low end of the curve with just about all of the ramp that Orzov are allowed to have, Orzov Signet, Talisman of Hierarchy, and Arcane Signet all lend a hand in getting Nalia out on curve, and more importantly, giving us more mana to cast the creatures from the top of our library. Speaking of topping, Sensei's Divining Top is one of the few ways beyond scrying that we'll be able to actually ensure the top card of our library is one of our party people of which we have a few at the 1 and 2 drop slot. Archpriest of Iona, Mother of Ruins, and Malachia Bloodpriest help fill the cleric slot and provide us with a potential nice beat stick, protection for our important creatures, and the chance of a big life swing the later in the game we get him out. Mindblade Render offers additional draws from hitting people with warriors. Dathui Void Wardrobe gives us our first rogue of the deck beyond Nalia herself, and one of the most annoying graveyard hate effects in the game. Zulaport Cutthroat is yet another rogue, but also helps us drain our opponents when our party guests start to leave early. To help keep the party going though, we have two additional clerics at the 2 CMC slot in the form of Selfless Spirit and Shale, Dean of Radiance. The Spirit can protect our board and Shale can buff our board with more plus one plus one counters. Now, if we really need to draw cards, we can play that other side. But Ambrose isn't part of our party, 
So maybe only really play this side of the card if you've got a load of creatures out with counters and just need to refill your hand. And of course we can't forget our only two drop wizard, Deep Gnome Terramancer, and how utterly bonkers he is. Anytime a player cracks a fetch or resolves a cultivate, flash this little guy in and boom, you go get your planes card that you want and put it straight onto the battlefield. None of this, if an opponent controls more lands nonsense, you could have the most lands in the game and this gnome will still trigger. Love him. Moving up to the three mana slot, we find more cards that lean into our plus one, plus one counter theme whilst being true to the soul of the party. From Baldur's Gate herself, Lysiel Valakir's champion adds more counters to our creatures and unbreakable formation buffs our entourage with counters and indestructible or can just be an instant speed means of saving us from a board wipe. And we also get into a few more creatures to fill out our party. Nighthawk Scavenger, Varagoth Bloodsky Seer and Extraction Specialist help bolster our roguish ranks. Adding a massive flying beater, a tutor on a stick and a means of reanimating our Voidwalker or Blood Priest depending on what the situation calls for. Grim Horse Specs and Rumor Gatherer and Zathrid Necromancer are our wizards with adding more drawing potential to the deck. Rumor Gatherer benefits us from playing more creatures and helping us scry away unwanted cards to make the most of Nalia's ability. And finally, the Necromancer gives us a 2 2 zombie every time a human we control dies. And, spoiler alert, most of the deck is humans, with our party types being their secondary characteristic. Frontline Medic and Liana Heretical Healer are both human clerics that help keep our board alive in combat, because remember our deck is the angry kind of murder hobos, and Liliana's flip side helps resurrect our fallen friends to get us a full party again before even the first saving throw has been rolled. Harper Recruiter is one of the new cards that is one of the best means of drawing our creatures possible, as the trigger is whenever they attack, and the evasion of flying is perfect. And to help cast all of these creatures, who usually have the white core identity in there, Oketra's Monument not only makes everything cheaper, but also makes us 1-1 one, one warriors to buff out those ranks as well. Now the last 3-drop I want to mention is Mirror Entity, because much like your DM's half-nerdy brother, they can fill in whatever slot you need in a pinch. Or for when your rogue cancels on you half an hour before you're due to sit down and start playing, I mean seriously Chris, what the hell was that man? Plus the little guy also has a very useful effect of being able to buff our entire team to have a massive base power and toughness to, you know, kind of actually get in for some good hits of damage and hopefully end the game. Moving up to the four drops, we have our clerics, Abzan Battle Priest, Alms Collector, Draugr Necromancer, and Mangara the Diplomat. The Battle Priest gives all of our creatures with counters lifelink to stabilize our life total while we assemble our party. Alms Collector and Mangara both help us draw cards in a very white way. And the Draugr is another piece of graveyard hate, but this time with the upside of being able to cast anything from exile and multiple a turn which hopefully might even fill out our party for us. As for our wizards, Blood Tracker and Felisa, Fang of Silverquill, show a bit more of our plus one, plus one counter theme with being able to buff himself in the case of the Tracker and Felisa generating us annoying little flyers whenever one of our counter bearing creatures dies. And finally, we have Gaunty Lord of Luxury and Grim Hireling filling out our rogue slot with stealing our opponent's stuff, which is very roguish, and creating us a boatload of treasure with the option to then use it to get rid of any threatening creatures on board. We're also including another changeling in Irregular Cohort, simply because they bring a friend with them. And with Nalia already out, this means we can essentially have any other creature on the battlefield that isn't a rogue, and we'll get our full party trigger thanks to the changelings. And this is also the reason for Masquerade and Nexus being in the deck, as it makes all of our creatures, whatever they want to be, 
all of the time. Now we're going to move into the higher end of our curve, where we're going to be looking at cards to really abuse the party mechanic, help with our plus one, plus one counter theme, and hopefully actually look to end the game. Damning Verdict and Austere Command are great board wipes for our deck, as a lot of creatures are in the CMC or lower bracket, so being able to wipe the board of big scary things but keep ours around is amazing. And Damning Verdict, if played at the correct time, is just a one-sided board wipe for 5 mana. Speaking of one-sided board wipes, Stick Together is, whilst excellent advice for any DM group, a single-sided board wipe as we'll be having one of each for our party, and other players will hopefully not be so lucky. And the last two cards for the high-end support is Thwart the Grave, two for potentially only two mana, bring back two creatures from a graveyard to the battlefield. And Dusk Stroke Dawn is another example of a screwing over heavy hitting decks, but being able to grab back most of our deck with the Dawn part since it hits most of our party creatures. And we come to the final additions to our party. Dire Fleet Ravager, because we want to give the L to all life gain decks possible. Ravos Soul Tender to pump our board and keep recurring that selfless spirit the entire game. Solemn Doom Guide so that creatures can reanimate themselves with Unearth. And Valiant Changeling who should realistically only be 3 mana, but still get sorted into the higher end because of what's printed on the card. But they are also fabulous for, shockingly, being a changeling. And the last creature I'm going to mention before we get onto our lands is the Pontiff of Blight. Ideally, we want to be hitting face like any good pack of murder hobos, but the game may grind or stall out. The Pontiff, in addition to being a cleric, also allows us to extort the game into our favour, slowly draining the life from everyone and actually not needing to attack. Now moving on to the land, there are honestly only a few I've put into the deck outside of the precon. I mean, come on, this deck comes with Volta the Archangel and War Room in a pre-con. That's pretty damn good going. However, improvements can always be made with the help of Khan's Bastion to proliferate our plus one plus one counters so our party hits harder, and Emiria the Skyruin, a personal pet favourite card of mine, which when you get it online, then you'll always be getting back the best card in your grave straight into play, which is just an insane effect to have on land. Just make sure that when you're fetching for lands, you make sure you get your planes cards first. Overall, Nalia brings with her some much needed support for the party mechanic and fantastic draw ability in black white, as well as a means of buffing our board. Again, with her draw ability, it's not once a turn, you can just keep going for as long as you've got creatures there and as long as you've got mana. And as we've stated before, this precon is actually very good and needs very little tweaking to make it superbly playable at any LGS. Or just stop the kitchen table, it's entirely up to you really. Nalia brings to all of party, card draw, buffs and fantastic effects at a low CMC. And you know me, that's all I really ask for. Low CMC, good color combination and card advantage. And Nalia gets all of that just right. And that will be the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. What cards are you a fan of to put in this party-based commander deck? Let us know in the comments below. As always, if you like this type of content, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for more just like it, and be sure to head over and follow us on your preferred social media platform. As always, guys, I've been Alex, and I will see you next time.